Hey gang, as always, welcome back. Okay, so I know we've talked about uh, epoxides and how to determine the regiochemistry of certain reactions. And big fancy word I'm just throwing out there, not to sound smart, because remember this is chemistry for the people. But regiochemistry meaning, oh, it's acidic conditions. Where's the chemistry going to happen? Regio region wise, really, you know, on the more substituted carbon, less substituted. But remember, in acidic conditions for epoxides, when we attack, we go for the more substituted carbon. And for basic, we go for the less sterically hindered carbon. I just wanted to do a little bit of extra practice because I know everything I was doing was on a cyclohexane ring. I want to break away from that and show you that epoxides can occur uh, out off, like not on a ring, anywhere, straight chain, whatever. Okay, so let's just do a couple of, I have three examples, we'll rip through them, and then we can, for now, kiss epoxides goodbye. All right, so in this scenario right here, right, we have the CH3OH, you might even see some catalytic acid, something along these lines, but even if that wasn't there, right, we would assume acidic conditions because we got something protic going on, right? So, given this, right, we can think of our situation as such. The oxygen is protonated, and in acidic conditions like we just stated, remember, that's where we drew the resonance. We look, saw through the resonance the more prominent structure due to carbocation stability, that's, that's where the biggest delta plus is. That's where this nucleophile is going to be drawn. So given that that's the case, this, right, because this is only, you know, uh, has bonded oxygen and then it's um, bonded over here, but this is much more uh, substituted. This is the carbon we are going to roll with. So let's draw the mechanism just for gigs. We're going to attack right here, and I'm going to break that bond right there. So the reason why I wanted to do things off of a cyclohexane ring was also to show you how to do this stereochemically. So, because it's easy whenever you attack and something's a wedge, you just attach the attacking nucleophile as a dash, right? So what I want to show you all is that as long as you keep this line as your home base, right? I'm going to try and make this very dark. You can see that our leaving group is going to be kind of up like this, right? He's going to kick over. As long as you can reflect that the OCH3 that will eventually be attached is like this, you've then reflected backside attack, right? Almost the way we talked about anti-peri planar when we were doing E2 reactions, as long as you can show this, you've, you've then reflected backside attack. The only caveat to that is you have to just make sure that the wedge and the dash, you don't flip them, right? Like the wedge will be over here and the dash will be up here. And by meaning don't flip them, I don't mean do not do this, because then you've just effectively changed the ordering of things, right? So I'm going to re-erase that. So just make sure off of home base, reflect where your leaving group's going, attach the opposite way, and then make sure you reflect, okay, there's the wedge, and to the right of the wedge is the dashed ethyl group. This is the correct answer. And to prove it to you, let's assign R and S. So right here at this stereo center, right, we should have opposite stereochemistry. Uh, highest priority group here is one. Second highest priority group is here too, because we tie the carbons, but then um, it's attached to an oxygen. And then we have three. Methyl group is lowest priority. It's facing towards us, right? So it looks like R, but it's like lowest priority group is facing us. We got S. So this carbon, let's hope, is R. Highest priority group is the ether right here. Then we have this carbon alcohol, and then we have this. So again, it looks like S, but lowest priority group is facing us, it's actually R. So we definitely reflected the correct stereochemistry in the attack, but it's all about keeping your home baseline in the straight chain like this, making sure that your leaving group and your attacking nucleophile are anti to each other, and then you just leave everything the same, it, everything's taken care of. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this, and we are just going to go ahead and do another example. All right, so we got a terminal epoxide here, and if you look over the arrow, I hope you see the negative charge, and that's just kind of shaking you and screaming, hey, look at me. It's a basic environment. Basic. So if we're going to think what regiochemistry we're going to aim for, we're going to attack the carbon in the epoxide that is least sterically hindered, right? So if you're looking at this, right, we got this secondary carbon. This is primary. That's the carbon we're going to go for. So I'm going to switch colors because 
Why not? Let's have some fun, right? I'm going to use the S, the sulfur with the negative charge, right? Clearly, the more nucleophilic atom. We're going to come from the back side and attack here. Electrons will break. We will put electrons onto that oxygen. So he will stay a wedge with the negative charge. I didn't touch the deuterium and the hydrogen at all. So I'm going to leave them as such. And then I'm going, oh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, just kidding, just kidding. Think about where the sulfur has to co come from. If our leaving group is the wedge, right, then sulfur has to come in from the underside, the dashed side, and attack. So what that's going to do, and I almost made the same mistake I was trying to tell you guys not to make, is that if sulfur is going to bond as a dash, that means the deuterium has to flip up and be a wedge. So that's how that works. The nucleophile is going to take precedence and force its way to attack and bond where it needs to go, and the other groups will rearrange as a result. Right? And then all we need is the, the H2S will, will just form as a way to quench this negative charge. So if we want to, in black, draw our final product, we have the wedged OH up here. We have the dash SH down here, deuterium, as well as the hydrogen. Okay, so just wanted to point that out, right? We saw that uh, before, but I just wanted to make sure you we saw this in the context of a straight chain and not on a ring. Okay, I have one more example for all of us. So don't be sad that it's over, just be smile that it happened. And then we will close the book on epoxides. All right, gang, last one. So just stick with me and we'll just finish out this video. Okay, so I wanted to switch things up a little bit instead of just the reactant, reagents, give me the product. Okay, so here we kind of have like a, a two-stepper. And don't get lost in the sauce. Don't freak out because we've, we've learned anything that doesn't help anybody, right? So let's take this step by step. So don't even look at the product. Let's just figure out how to connect. Let's go from A to B and then, and then we'll tackle B to C. Okay, so... If, if I'm, the way I'm looking at this is that we're making an epoxide, right? From something that is not an epoxide. So remember, our base epoxide is three atoms, carbon, carbon, both bonded to a central oxygen, right? So let's look at this. Well, I see I have an oxygen here, the only oxygen in the molecule, right? As is this the only one. So these guys have to be the same. Well, one, and it's directly attached to this carbon, right? So it's, that's probably going to be in the epoxide. Well, nothing cooking over here if this was going to be my epoxide. I don't really see how I can make that work. I don't really also see anything going on from uh, if we can make this connection happen. However, and I'm sure you're probably like, Joe, why are you being dumb? Right? Just wanted to be thorough. I do see something going on here. What if we could have this oxygen attack right here? Because we do have a good leaving group, right? So the way we can make this happen is if we throw in a base, let's say if we throw in like some NaNH2 or even some, oh, actually, just kidding, don't do that, um, some NaNH2, right? The first thing that's going to happen is a quick acid-base reaction, right? That's the very first thing that this NH2- is going to want to do because they're very quick, they're very exothermic. What that's going to do is that's going to rip an H off of this oxygen. I'll even just draw it out. H2 minus. Grab that. So by deprotonating the oxygen and making an alkoxide, what's going to happen is we've now just upped the, nu the, the nucleophilic character of this oxygen. And what he's going to be doing from here on out is he's going to be staring at this carbon attached to the chlorine and he's going to want to do nucleophilic attack. And we can see this works out because, right, this, uh, this carbon right here right here, I'm going to dot him, that is this carbon right here, right, because we see there's an ethyl group off of him, oh, well, look, there's an ethyl group there, there's a dashed methyl, and we didn't alter anything about this wedge right here to the oxygen, it remained a wedge, and we know this checks out because this is a backside attack, well, if this chlorine was attached by a dash, you better believe the oxygen is going to bond as a wedge, so that's how we connect the first piece of this three, uh, this two-stepper, okay, so that's step number one. Now, here's more of the epoxide relevant, you know, regiochemistry type part of the problem. So, let's look at what we got here. Let's look at our product. We see we have a, uh, the, the, new, the new element, right? We see this methyl group, 
methyl group. C is ethyl, ethyl. We see an OH, right? The, the F, the, this O ethyl is new, right? So we either added, right, OET minus, or we added ethanol, right? Because this, this would be the basic, this would be the acidic. So how are we going to do this? Well, all we need to do is look to see which carbon is, you know, more or less substituted. Well, the ethyl is attached to this carbon right here. And if we look at this, this carbon is 1, 2, 3 tertiary. This carbon is secondary. Well, this is the more substituted carbon, so we need acidic conditions. So we could do ethanol if we want to be flashy, put a little H2SO4 in there. But it would be acidic conditions because the new piece we added was attached to the more substituted carbon. Okay, gang. Just wanted to make sure you were complete vets, complete experts at epoxides. Thanks for enjoying this sequel with me to epoxides. I hope it was better than most sequels you've seen and broken that little sequel rule. But we're going to keep charging on. Almost. We're, we're getting towards the end of OCHEM 1. And I hope you guys realize you are learning a lot of things. And soon enough, we're going to be putting them all together. See you in the next video.